I put my whole life in that cannery. You must be very proud. You picked a fine time to visit, stranger. I paid his burial fees, didn't I? Let the dead sleep. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to go rifling through other people's correspondence? Excuse you. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein already belong to Spacer's Choice. And we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Never mind. I don't have to explain myself to you. You want to know what gets my bio churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? That power regulator is company property. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. Apologies won't give us our lives back. But Edgewater's dead. Our cannery's dead. Adelaide's deserters are never coming back. Space's choice will shut us down before long. Some of us will die of illness by then. Some will move on. Some will starve. And as for me, I will tender my resignation, whereupon I shall be processed and then duly imprisoned for gross incompetence. kind of psychopath I can't I need to leave I need to get away from here I need to get away from you
What to do now? How am I supposed to file a report with the power dead?
we get freighters in every sense. Town's been dark a while now. Could be a mechanical trying to sabotage us. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh, <laughs> listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. I have imagined it, but until you came along, I never thought I had the choice. I want to ask you something, and you can say no, but can I come with you? I could tend to your engine, I know my G-valves from my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room.
I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, 
you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. I've shut off the visual feed from my ocular inputs in the captain's quarters. So you're free to disrobe whenever you'd like. Breaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Hey, Cap. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else?
That's not the point. This Papa just knocked out one of my workers. Customs and inspection, right this way! Identification, please. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. 
Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. You can't miss it. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. Not gonna lie, you're in a pickle. But uh, Udom's an uh, interesting guy. Might be y'all could come to accords if you play your cards right. Huh. Records show this ain't the first time your ship's been impounded. Seems to get cleared up pretty quick. You might not be in this pickle for long. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in sickbay? Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Ah, a handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? The fence. You'll find her in the rest and go, on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board. That is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Are you pulling my leg? You must be one of them long-haul freighters from outside the colony. Well, I won't hold it against you. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That groups what we now call the Board. Yep, Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been de-thawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Sitting around, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Glad to help. All right. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Sure thing. Be seeing you. Could I have a word with you, Captain? Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the Groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. The only one I'm aware of. 
I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. Fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain, uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain. This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew chip I mean, the scholar, shipped in and out with. Unless you're here to file an incident report or to inquire about the bounty... Got a hot one for you. Captain Gunner McRed. Just 26 hours old. Uh, the posting, that is. Not the criminal. Uh, allegations include several counts of flying under the influence, carrying open alcoholic containers, failure to pay docking fees, resisting arrest, and assaulting not one, but two officers. Swerving in the air was more like it. Then he crashed hard into the dock and tumbled out of his ship and fled on foot. Spilled Rizzo's Violet Spectrum vodka all over Officer Hartley. An affront of its own, considering none of us are approved for anything higher than green spectrum. Last tip we got pointed toward the back bays. You want the reward? Do the legwork. You and about six other enterprising mavericks. It's only a matter of time before someone brings me McRed's head, or his lucky lighter, as proof of kill. I do hope you're the lucky hunter, though. Good luck. Still waiting to hear back on that bounty for Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? We can't just let anyone walk in here. I wouldn't be, uh, well, that's not... Uh, we just don't. Maybe if you clear an open bounty and get in good with Commandant Sunita, or help Chief Tennyson fix this heat, that might warrant a thank you tour or something. All right. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Chief Junlei Tennyson, she runs the ship, does a real great job of it too. Her family's worked on it for, gosh, since it was built, I think, back before the crossing. What's she like? I is she a good boss? Good as she can be, I guess. What with all the troubles Groundbreaker's facing. She could stand to lighten up, I suppose, but she tries her best to do right by folks, and that's what matters. Sure is. 
but she makes it look easy. She's real competent, our chief, even if she ain't real friendly. Chief Tennyson don't generally hire outsiders for station jobs, but you could try asking at Sublight Salvage. They got an office on the far end of the promenade deck. Anything else I can help you with, mister? I'd like to remind spacers and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted for your protection. Canyons of acid and sulfur rain are the least of the horrors. Try not to be distracted by the glare of the adverts. Lots of unsavory types about. Very flavored power nuggets, now with 12% more crunch. <laughs> I know she's in there, Mburu. You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Doctor. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Mburu? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Something I can help you with? Not without dispensation from Chief June Lei, I fear. Supplies are hard to come by out here. If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no. She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Take care. You got any more of that coagulating spray left? Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever gonna get my service mechanicals at this rate. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Keep hanging around, and I'll begin to think you're here for me. What can I do for you? You have yourself a day, then.
Keep up the good work. <coughs> You're sure this is perfectly safe? I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease myself. truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So I hold up here to lay low. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? on Jesse? Good luck. The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. 